So this worksheet has a whole bunch of problems that pertain to molarity calculations. Um, some of them are dilution problems. The first problem that we're going to do is just simply to calculate the molarity of a solution. The molarity, which is abbreviated capital M, is calculated by taking the moles of the solute, for this particular situation it's Ki, and dividing it by the volume of the solution in liters. So we are going to need to begin by taking the 6.5 grams of Ki and converting that into moles. And we'll do that with just a straightforward gram to mole conversion. We have 6.5 grams of Ki. We want to multiply that by a conversion factor that has grams of Ki down on the bottom so that those units can cancel. And we want moles of Ki up on top. And the relationship between grams and moles for a substance is the, is the uh, molecular weight. So I'm going to, rather than calculate these molecular molecular weights, I'm going to just look it up. Um, molar mass of Ki, 166. That means one mole is 166 grams. And we'll go ahead and crunch that. 6.5 divided by 166 is 0 0.03 nine moles. So we'll take that 0 0.039 moles and we will plug that into this molarity calculation 0 0.039 moles. We want to divide by the volume of the solution 150 milliliters but it needs to be in liters. Um, to convert from milliliters to liters you just divide by a thousand so instead of 150 that's going to be 0.15 and this gives us 0.26 capital M, we pronounce that 0.26 molar. Sometimes we'll write the formula of the solute after, so 0.26 molar Ki. While I have the website open, what I'm going to do is go through the rest of the problems on this worksheet and look up the molecular weights for all of the different molecules because we're going to need to use them over and over again. So we'll just do all of this all at once. The next one that we have is the CH3COOH. That is 60 grams per mole. I like to round. And then we have C6H12O6. C6H12O6. That's 180. Um, and we... For problem four, that's a dilution problem, um, and five, so we don't need the molecular weights for that. Uh, we need CaOH2, CaOH2 is 74 grams per mole, and we are also going to need KMnO4. So some of these I'm skipping because I know that we won't need their molar masses. KMnO4 is 158. So that's really handy. If you didn't know, you could just Google molecular weights. You definitely can. Um, so let's work on problem number two. What is the molarity of 85 milliliters of, of a solution that contains 1.77 grams? This is exactly the same as what we just did. So we're going to need to figure out the moles of that substance and we'll divide it by the liters of the solution. To get the moles, we'll take that 1.77 grams and we will multiply by our conversion factor. One mole is 60 grams. 1.77 divided by 60. I hit 90 on my calculator. 1.77 divided by 60 is 0 0.0295 moles. So that's going to get plugged in right here. And then we want to divide by the volume in liters. So remember, we're going to take that 85 and divide it by 1,000. That's going to give us 0 0.085. And this gives us a molarity of 0.3 five molar. The next problem, question number three, this one is slightly different. So for this one, we know the molarity 
and we're being asked to calculate what the volume is. If we're looking at this molarity equation, as long as we know two of these three variables, we can calculate whatever is unknown. So in this problem, we're gonna be, I'm gonna rewrite it down here. Molarity is moles over liters. So we're trying to solve for liters in this case. We know the molarity, it's 2.53, and we don't know the moles directly, but we know the mass, and we can use that to figure out the moles. So what we should be doing to start is taking this molarity equation and just doing some algebra on it. Moles, or excuse me, molarity times liters is going to give us moles, if that's what we wanted to figure out. Or um, liters, which is what we want in this problem, can be solved by taking the number of moles and dividing it by the molarity. So all I've done here is just some algebraic manipulation of the molarity equation. Liters is going to be moles divided by molarity. So let's take our 3.81 grams and figure out how many moles that is. One mole is 180 grams according to the internet. 3.81 divided by 180 is... 0 0.0212 moles, 0 0.0212 moles, and the molarity the problem tells us is 2.53 molar, which we could also write as moles per liter, um, just to kind of remind us that our volume unit is going to be liters, not milliliters. That's going to be 0 0.0084 liters. And let's take a look at our next problem. This one is a dilution problem. So for the dilution problems, we use a different equation. M1V1 equals M2V2. In this dilution equation, M refers to molarity and V refers to volume. Your volume could either be liters or milliliters in this, in this equation, as long as you use the same volume unit for both, uh, V1 and V2. So for this one, we've got four possible variables. Um, the M1 and the V1 refer to prior to the dilution, so like the original solution, and M2, V2 refer to the solution after it's been diluted. So one of the challenges with these problems is just matching up um, the different molarities and volumes with the variables in the equation. So this is telling us that we have 2.5 liters, so that's gonna be our original volume of a 0.4 molar solution, that's gonna be our original molarity, and we're diluting it to a new volume of 3.25. So that'll be our final volume. And we need to figure out what the new molarity is. So I'm gonna start by doing algebra to isolate M2, that's our new molarity, that's gonna be calculated by M1, V1 over V2. We're gonna plug in our M1, which is 0.4, and our V1, which is 2.5, and divide by our V2, 3.25. So these are pretty simple um, calculations. Typically, these dilution calculations are pretty easy. This gives us a new molarity of 0.31 molar. Uh, next question is similar. What volume is needed to prepare 500 milliliters of a 1.25 molar solution. So what volume do we need? That means like how much do we need to start with? Um, 8.35, that's our in initial solution. We're trying to make 500 milliliters uh, of a 1.75. So that's our final molarity and our final volume. And I'm gonna move this, uh, move this out of the way. So this time we're trying to solve for V1. When we do our rearranging of M1 V1 equals M2 V2, it's gonna look a little different. We're trying to isolate the V1 variable. So that's gonna be M2 V2 over M1. M2 is 1.75, V2 is 500 milliliters. Remember, it doesn't matter what volume unit you use in this equation, as long as you use the same volume unit the whole time. M1 is 8.35, and we get 1.75 times 500 divided by 8.35 is 105 milliliters. Uh, next problem, how many grams of calcium hydroxide are needed to prepare 100 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution. So we're back to regular molarity calculation again, moles per liter. 
And we know that we have, we want a 0.1 molar solution. We know our volume should be 100 milliliters. We're trying to figure out how many moles that is, uh, and we'll convert that into grams. So we want to begin by rearranging this molarity calculation. Moles times, molarity times liters equals moles. That's actually what we want to solve for here. So the, we'll just go with that. Um, moles is going to be equal to our molarity, which is 0.100. I'm going to write instead of capital M, I'm going to write moles per liter because it makes it a little bit easier for us to see the units here. Our volume needs to be in liters. It's given to us in milliliters. So we're going to divide by 1,000 to get that into liters. And this is going to tell us that we need 0 0.01 moles of our calcium hydroxide. And now all we need to do is convert that into grams using that molecular weight that I looked up on the internet. 74 grams per mole. Um, we want to make sure that the mole units are canceling. So this is 0.74 grams. Now the rest of the problems on this worksheet are actually pretty complicated. Like, I'm just going to kind of warn you, they're, they're pretty hard. Um, these ones, the first six problems that we've done, I would say are like really typical, traditional first year chem student molarity and dilution calculations. And the rest of them would be for people that want a little bit more of a challenge. Question number seven, even though it's next, is actually, in my opinion, the hardest one on this whole entire worksheet. So I'm going to save that one for the end. And we're going to go to the other side of the worksheet. And we'll work on eight, nine, and ten. And then go back to number seven. Question number eight is one that has like multiple dilution um, questions within the same problem. So it's, it's an M1V1 equals M2V2 question. It's telling us that we have um, 0.8214 grams of KMNO4 dissolved in water and then diluted to a volume of 500 milliliters. And then that solution gets diluted over and over and over again. And we need to calculate the concentration of the final solution. So we need to start by calculating the original molarity of the solution, um, moles per liter. That's going to be what we're focusing on initially is just this part of the problem right here. So we're ignoring everything else. And we need to begin by solving for the number of moles. Um, we're going to take that 0.8214 grams and we'll convert that into moles. And I've got the molecular weight right here. Uh, same, different problem, but it's the same, same molecule. 158 grams. 0.8214 divided by 158 is 0 0.0052 moles so we'll plug that in over here and the volume of the part that i've all just the stuff i've highlighted in pink that's all we're starting with in liters remember we need to divide by a thousand um, this gives us a molarity of 0 0.0104 so that's got that part of the problem solved now I'm going to erase that highlight and we'll move on to the next part. We're going to take a two milliliter sample of this solution and transfer it to a 1000 milliliter flask and dilute it. So now we're doing a dilution. So we're starting with this molarity and this volume and we're turning it into this volume and we're trying to figure out the new molarity of this solution. So this is gonna be M1V1 equals M2V2 and we're trying to solve for M2. So M2 would be calculated by M1V1 over V2, just doing some algebra there. M1, which is what we just calculated, 0 .10, 0 0.0104. The V1, the problem tells us is, two milliliters we're going to divide actually let's just leave it in milliliters two milliliters because remember we can use whatever volume unit we want as long as we're consistent v2 is a thousand milliliters so this is going to give us our new molarity and times two divided by a thousand is 2.08 times 10 to the negative five molar 
So there's that. So now what I'm going to do, we're ready for the next part. I'm going to erase these M1, V1, M2, V2 labels that we have, as well as the highlighting, and we'll move on to the next part of the problem. Next, we're going to take 10 mils of that solution and transfer it into 250 and dilute it again. So now this is going to be our new M1. 10 milliliters is our new V1, and 250 is our new V2, and we're calculating M2 again. M1, V1 over V2. Our M1 right here is 2.08 times 10 to the negative 5. Our V1 is 10 milliliters, and our V2 is 250 milliliters. And this is going to give us our final molarity times 10 divided by 250. Uh, even though I'm rounding on paper, I'm not rounding on my calculator. So it's possible that these numbers might be slightly different. Um, that are coming off of my calculator than if you just entered these numbers here, because again, I'm not I'm not rounding on my calculator. I'm only rounding on paper. So I'm getting a final molarity of 8.32 times 10 to the minus 7, and that's um, the answer to the question. Question number 9 follows off of this, and it says calculate the mass needed to prepare this final solution. So this is asking us, like, if we wanted to make this solution, how much would we need? This is a molarity calculation, moles per liter. And this is saying, here's our molarity. Our final volume is 250 milliliters, so we need to solve for moles. So we're going to rearrange this. Moles is equal to molarity times liters. That's just doing some algebra on this. The molarity, which we calculated in question 8, is 8.32 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity or moles per liter and the liter so this is kind of tricky because we've got volumes all over the place but the final solution the final solution had a final volume of 250 milliliters which is 0.25 liters so that is two i'm going to write it down here 2.08 moles and the problem wants us to calculate the mass. So we're going to do a gram to mole conversion, 158 grams per mole. We want it set up like this so that the mole units will cancel. Wait a minute. I lost some. Hold on. I lost my 10 to the stuff. 2.8 times 10. 2.8 times 10 to the negative 7 moles. That's important. <laughs> Um, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 7 times 158 is 3.29 times 10 to the negative 5 grams. So that problem is not, like, this, the math isn't hard, but, like, keeping track of all the steps is pretty tricky on that one. Um, and this next problem is just kind of, it's kind of, a, you know, like a different perspective. So this is saying that, our, um, we have an antibiotic that can transport sodium ions at a rate of 5 times 10 to the 7 uh, ions per second. And we need to calculate how long it would take to get enough sodium ions into a cell to increase its concentration by 8 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. And the volume of that cell is 2 times 10 to the negative 10. So let's start by writing the molarity calculation and let's just kind of think about this. We know that we have... Um, and we want an increase in concentration by 8 times 10 to the minus 3, so that's our molarity, and we know the volume of the cell, so we can calculate how many moles of sodium ions we need to move into the cell to accomplish this. So let's say our moles is going to be molarity times liters. The molarity is 8 times 10 to the negative 3. Um, molarity or moles per liter and the volume is 2 times 10 to the negative 10 milliliters but remember we need to divide that by a thousand to get it into liters so that's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 13 liters so what we're doing now is calculating how many moles of sodium ions we need to move into the cell um, 8 times 10 to the negative 3 
1.6 times 10 to the negative 15 moles of sodium ions. And the now that part of it is like the molarity part of the problem. So now we've got to see what else we have going on here. We have this antibiotic that can move them at a rate of 5 times 10 to the 7 ions per second. So this is in units of moles. What we need to do is figure out how many actual ions we are, are needing to move into this cell. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 15 moles of sodium ions. Uh, and we need to multiply that by a conversion factor that is going to get rid of that mole unit and convert into just straight up sodium ions. And that conversion factor is Avogadro's number. One mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So this is going to tell us exactly, not in units of moles, but in units of individual sodium ions, how many of those we're gonna to need to move into the cell. That is 9.64 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My calculator took it out of scientific notation. So we need that many sodium ions in the cell. And now what we're gonna do is use this rate to help us figure out how long that, that process is gonna take. So we have got 9.64 times 10 to the 8th sodium ions that we need. And we're trying to convert the sodium ions into time. And we'll do that using this rate. 5.0 um, times 10 to the 7, 5.0 times 10 to the 7 ions in one second. And this is 19 seconds. So let's go back to that one problem that I said was actually pretty tricky that I was going to save for the last. Here it is. Um, this problem at first looks like it's unsolvable, but it's not. So let me just kind of a little bit explain what's going on here. We have a solution that is potassium chloride. If we know the molarity and we know the volume. And to that solution, we're going to be adding 0.416 molar magnesium chloride. And our goal is to make a solution that's overall 0.275 molar, just in terms of chloride ions. So this KCl is going to be a source of a single chloride ion. MgCl2 is a source of two chloride ions because it's Cl2. Um, so this problem is tricky because when we add the magnesium chloride into the KCl, we're increasing the amount of chloride ions, which is going to increase the concentration, but we're also going to be increasing the volume, which serves to decrease the concentration. So we've got like two separate things happening at once, which initially is going to make it seem like it's an unsolvable problem. But let me show you like the strategy that I would take to solve this problem, and there might be another way to do it as well, but this is kind of just how my brain works with it. So I'm starting with my goal here. I know that my goal is to make a solution that is 0.275 molar, and that means that I want 0.275 moles of chloride ion per one liter of solution. I don't know how much solution I'm actually going to end up with, and I also don't know how many moles of chloride I'm going to end up with, but this gives me the ratio of moles per liter. So this is kind of like my, my starting point. I'm just going to say one liter of SOLN. That's going to be my abbreviation for solution. So this is going to come from adding these two solutions together because we're mixing the two solutions together. So this is going to come from the KCl solution plus the MgCl2 solution mixed together. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of pull these apart. So what I'm going to do next is define this KCl solution in terms of the molarity and the volume and things like that. The KCl solution is going to give us a certain number of moles of chloride ions. So I'm going to write that as the moles of Cl minus from KCl divided by the volume of the solution of KCl. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the MgCl2 solution. So I'm going to I'm going to move this over here. Molarities are additive. So this is going to be the moles 
of the chloride ions from MgCl2 divided by the liters of the solution. Actually, this is just the liters of solution, not individual liters, total liters of total solution. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is work on defining the moles of, KC, of chloride from the KCl solution using the molarity equation. Molarity is moles per liter, and that means that the moles of a solution is the molarity times the liters. So the molarity, uh, the, excuse me, the moles of chloride from KCl are gonna be defined by this equation right here. The moles of chloride from the KCl solution will be the molarity of the KCl solution times the volume of the KCl solution. So what I'm going to do is erase this term and I'm going to input instead the molarity of the KCl times the liters of the KCl solution. And then we're going to do the same thing over here for the MgCl2 solution. The moles are going to be the molarity times the liters, but we've got to be a little bit careful because there are two chloride ions in this. So um, when we do this calculation for the, for the MgCl2, that is the moles of MgCl2 are equal to the molarity times the liters. If we want to know the moles of just the chloride ion, it's going to be twice the molarity times the liters because there are two chlorides in every one molecule. So we're going to input that in this spot right here. We're going to say two times the molarity of the MgCl2 solution times the volume of the MGT, MgCl2 solution. So we've got that. And then the last thing that we need to put in here, last thing we need to define is the liters of the solution. So this is like the, the total liter of solution. What we're going to do is make this one big giant fraction. So I'm going to move the plus sign up. I'm going to extend this so it's one big giant fraction and the liters of solution, this is gonna be the total liters. So this is gonna be the liters of the KCl plus the liters of the MgCl2. And when we do all of the math on this, it needs to equal this ratio of 0.275 moles per liter. Okay, so I need to erase this because I need to make some room. Some of these numbers we know, and some of these numbers we can plug right into this equation. So for example, we know the molarity of the KCl, we know the volume of the KCl, and we know the molarity of the MgCl. So we've got a few things that we can fit in. I think I'm gonna move this equation down, and I'm just gonna start plugging in what I know. I'm gonna plug in the molarity of the KCl, so that's gonna go right here, and that is 0.10. And I know the volume of the KCl, I need to put it in liters. So that's going to be 0.150. I'm leaving units off just to, like, there's enough stuff going on in this problem. I don't, I'm going to try to write as few symbols as I can. Uh, we know the molarity of the MgCl2, so we can plug that in. That is 0.416. This is what we don't know. This is what we're trying to figure out. So I'm going to give this a math variable, classic math variable. I'm going to call it, that's our x. The liters of KCl are 150.15. Oops, 0.15. And the liters of MgCl2, again, that's what we don't know, and that's what we're calling x right there. And then in the spirit of getting rid of units, I'm going to get rid of units on this side as well. And 0.275 divided by one is just 0.275. So we're just going to go like that. And what I'm trying to do is just to make this a more like user-friendly math problem, something that's not so intimidating to look at. So we're going to just start, at this point, we're just going to start doing algebra. Um, I'm going to begin by getting rid of this denominator by multiplying it with the left hand side. So I'm just going to rearrange. I'm not going to actually do any math yet. 0 0.275 times 0 0.15 plus x is equal to 0 0.10 times 0 0.150 plus 2 times 0 0.416 times x. 
all we have to do is solve for x. And when we see it like this, it doesn't really look that bad. So now I'm going to actually start doing the math. Uh, I'm going to start on the left-hand side, 0. 0.275 times 0. 0.15. That is 0 0.04125 plus 0.275x. So I've just expanded the left-hand side. And then I'm going to multiply these two terms together. 0 0.1 times 0 0.15 is 0 0.015. And I'm going to exp uh, multiply these terms together. 2 times 0 0.416 times x is 0.832x. And now I'm going to combine like terms. And it looks like what I want to do is move this to the left-hand side, and I want to move this to the right-hand side just to eliminate negative signs from popping up. 0 0.04125 minus 0 0.015 is 0 0.02625. So that's I get that from taking the 0 0.015 and moving it over to the left-hand side, subtracting it from 0 0.04125. And then my right-hand side, I'm going to take this term. I'm going to, I'm going to move this over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to take this 0 0.823, subtract 0 0.275. That gives me 0.557x. And now I can solve for x. 0 0.02625, which is 21 point. Two. Two. That seems super high because that's in units of liters. Um, so it makes me feel like maybe I missed a zero somewhere which I very well may have done. Um, the strategy here is correct. The video is long enough, so I'm not gonna redo it, but this number does seem really high. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just seems really high, kind of raises an alarm to me. So what I want to do, but I'm not gonna do it on video, is just re-crunch all of these numbers. This problem is definitely set up correct. It's just possible that I made a multiplication mistake somewhere. Uh, like I would feel more comfortable if this was like maybe two liters. Um, I wouldn't worry about it then. But and again, it's not necessarily wrong. It just is a really big volume. So it makes me want to reevaluate re everything. I figured it out like almost immediately as soon as I stopped recording. I just divided wrong here at the very end. Um, it's 0 0.02625 divided by 0.557. I just had those um, division steps backwards. So this is 0 0.047, uh, which is a way more normal number, volume uh, in units of liters.